This is the Create New World dialogue, the world creation dialogue from the game Minecraft, which I hear is pretty popular. Uh, if you live so under a rock and you've somehow never heard of Minecraft, the idea is when you create a world, which is an infinite world, well, it's not, it's almost infinite. That doesn't make any sense. What does it mean to be almost infinite? That makes no sense. So it's basically, it's large enough that if you were to start walking and you were to hold down the W key for your entire life, you would never reach the end of this world. And it's all completely randomly generated, so that's cool. But here's the trick. You put a seed right in here, and if you put the same seed in, then it will always generate the same random world for you. Now that kind of blows my mind. How is that possible? It's random. I thought, you know, random means it's never the same twice. And yet, if you put a word here like, like Steve or Apple or something, then it will generate the same wor uh, world if you always put the same word in there. So today we're going to figure out how Minecraft does that. And to do that, we're going to take a look at the random number generator in uh, most computers. So it's a function called rand. You give it no arguments. And it just spits out for you a series of random numbers. So it might spit out like 7, and then 2, and then 124, and then 10, and then so on. I mean, I just made these numbers up, they're, so they're not very random. But um, but this is, this is how random number generators work. And in computers, they actually have a special name. They're not random per se. They are pseudo random. Pseudo-random means that they're calculated using these very advanced mathematical formulas such that they appear to be random, but they're actually a deterministic sequence. Deterministic means that if you're always given the same input, then you'll always produce the same output. And that's what, ran uh, that's what Minecraft was. If you always gave it the same seed word, like Steve, then it would always produce the same output world for you. So how do you pass it a seed? There is a seed function called srand. And it takes an argument. That is uh, the number n, which is just an integer. And if you always give it the same integer n, then it will always make the same, um, the same sequence of random numbers for you, which is good. So how do we take this and make a world out of it? Minecraft takes these numbers and feeds them into its world generation. But having a, so these numbers are in the range from zero to whatever the maximum is for that random number, gen, whatever random number generator you're having to be using. But of course, it's different for every language. And even if you're using C, which you, it's likely you're using C or C++ if you're making video games, then it's actually different depending on what compiler you're using. It's actually not standardized at all. But it's guaranteed to always be between 0 and at least 2 to the 15 minus 1. That is um, the largest number that you can fit in an unsigned or an assigned, an assigned, an assigned short. An assigned short, yes. So. But that's, again, that's not very useful for us. We want a number like 1 to 100 so that we can say, well, what's the starting player's health? Or what's the number of apples in this player's starting inventory? Or something like that. So we want to take this. Man, the hardest part of this is figuring out what color to use next. We'll go with purple. We want to take something in this range from 0 to 2 to the 15 minus 1. And we want to transfer it to the range 1 to 100. 1 to 100. We want so that um, we get this input number and we transform it somehow to be only in the range from 1 to 100. And so we're going to use a clever trick. It's an integer manipulation trick called modulus. That's what this percentage sign is right here. It's a modulus.
Wait, no, it's not. I changed my mind. It's a modulo. How do I erase? How do I erase on my new tablet? Erase. It's a modulo. And what it means is the remainder of division. So I'm going to put 100 here. Okay. We're going to take this number R. I forgot to mention R is whatever number that we get out of the random number generator, which is in this range. And we are going to divide it by 100. And then the result of this operation will be the remainder of that division. So if R happens to be 100, then R modulo 100 will be 0. If R happens to be 150, R modulo 100 will be 50. So we'll always get a number between 0 and 99. So then we just plus 1, and now we have a number from 1 to 100. So this is a pretty good way of generating random numbers, but we have a slight problem. Slight problem. There are 2 to the 15 minus 1 possible inputs to this random number function that gives us 1 to 100 but there are 100 outputs and 100 is not evenly divisible by 2 to the 15 minus 1 which just happens to be 32,767 see it's not divisible by 100 that means that some numbers are going to have a higher probability of coming out than other numbers and to try and solidify that I'll see if I can draw a picture let's say we have 8 input numbers okay that is a range from 0 to 2 to the 3 minus 1 and what we want is 5 output numbers 5 output numbers so we have to assign input numbers to output numbers so let's say that these first two go to the first output number so if our input is 0 or 1 then the output is going to be 1 and then if the 0 is 2 or 3, then the output is going to be 2. And if our input is 4 or 5, then the output is going to be 3. Okay. If the, out, if the input is 6, then the output will be 4. And if the input is... What number have I not used yet? I'll just go back to gray. The input is 7, that's very dark gray. Then the output will be 5. So we've assigned each output number to a range of input numbers that will give us um, that will give us that output number. But now we can see that I mean we can't have we can't split 3 up to be part 2 and part 3. So we have this problem where some of these output numbers have two input numbers going into them and some only have one. So the probability of getting a 1 here is going to be, well, 1, 2 is going to be 2 out of 8, right? Going back to the previous video, we have 8 total possible um, possibilities for input, and 2 of them go to 1, so we have a 2 out of 8 probability for that. And we have 2 out of 8 here to get 2, and 2 out of 8 to get 3, but only 1 out of 8 to get 6 and 7. There's only 1 out of 8 probability. So we have an uneven distribution of outputs. So let's see how that looks when we do it with this 2 to the 15 minus 1 number up here. Okay, So 2 to the 15 minus 1, like I said, is 32,767. So there are some numbers. I'm not going to get into which one exactly, but there's only two possibilities here. Okay, so I'll say the probability of getting some of the numbers is going to be 327 over 32,767. And the probability of getting some of the other numbers is going to be 328 over 32,767. That's because there are going to be 327 possible inputs that lead to this particular number being chosen. And in this case, there are 328 possible inputs that lead to the other number being chosen. And I know this notation looks weird, but there are only two possible, every number, every output number will fall into one of these two categories. So then, 
what's this if we do this if we actually do this division to get a probability that is a 0 0.00 have it written down right here 9979248 but if we have uh, the 328 possibility then that is a 0 0.01 0010711 and so on. So you see these are slightly different. Very, very slightly different. Probably not different enough to really make us worry about it, but they are slightly different. It's something to be um, aware of. Usually it won't be a significant factor in, in, the, in the program you're designing, but sometimes it might get you. So now let's go to the code and do some pseudo random number generation. So here we are in the code section and we're, we have a loop here. We're going to print out a hundred random numbers from one to a hundred. That lady was singing. And the random numbers I'm, the random number generator that I'm using is actually a Mersine twister. That's what MT stands for right here. Mersine twister. It's just a special type of pseudo random number generator that has some nice properties, so I tend to use it for my projects. Um, but for our purposes, it's actually completely identical to the system ran random number generator. So I set these defines up here so that we can pretend that we're using the system ones, which will just look like this, srand and rand. So let's see, yes, where was I? We're adding 100 numbers, I'm sorry, we're generating 100 random numbers with our pseudo random number generator. And it's going to give us, in fact, I'll, I'll show you, I'll show you exactly what it gives us. If I just generate 100 random functions, uh, I'm sorry, 100 random numbers, then it's gonna give me a bunch of, whoo, look at these guys, they're huge. This is not even between zero and two to the 15 minus one. This is probably gonna be between, looks like it's between negative, um, two to the 31 and positive two to the 31 minus one, Some, something really big like that. Um, but now we want to get this to be on a range from one to a hundred. So we're going to do that modulo trick that I showed you before. And it occurs to me that I should show you the mathematical notation for that modulo. I'll try to remember that next to video or actually i'll just pop it up on the screen now that's what it looks like but it's the same thing as modulo so in any case we're going to use this formula we're going to rebuild it and we're going to see that now we have a hundred random numbers between one and a hundred okay we can see we have one two we have three three times it gave us exactly a hundred and once here it gave us just the number one but it never gave us anything big, bigger than 100 or less than 1, which is good. That's what we want. But if I run the program again, we have the exact same random sequence, 100, 100, 100, and 1. There they are. But let's say I change this to a number that betrays me as a Douglas Adams fan. We're going to set that to 42 and now we run the program and we can see that we've generated just a completely different sequence. The 100s aren't, well there are still 100s but they're in different places and I don't see the number one having been generated at all. So now that we know how to generate random numbers we're going, we are going to look much more closely next time at how to deal with the probabilities of those random numbers and how to generate useful things with the random numbers. See you next time.